Leonis is a total weak loser who gets reincarnated into a 10 year old body. He meets up with two hot waifus and he's still all about those massive plots. Later, he even gets one of them to hook up with him. But before all that goes down, Resilia and Regina were low-key creeping through the seventh floor of the underground ruins, trying to uncover the tea on the voids. They stumbled upon a room that was straight out of a fantasy novel. Giant statues everywhere which they suspected was a king's tomb. As they ventured deeper, they came across a massive door with weird writings they couldn't decipher. Resilia snapped a photo to examine later, while Regina wandered off to snoop around. Resilia gently touched the words on the door and suddenly she got a major case of deja vu. Suddenly, the door lit up and swung open, revealing a room with a giant crystal at the far end. To her surprise, she saw a person trapped inside the crystal. <laughs> Roselia whipped out her gun and started firing, trying to break the crystal and free the person, but the bullets just bounced off. The demon lord inside the crystal got furious and decided to teach her a lesson. He cast a spell that shattered the crystal, sending Roselia tumbling to the ground. As he approached her, he got lost in a trance, mesmerized by her beauty. By the time he snapped out of it, Roselia had already regained consciousness and was asking how a kid ended up in this place. The demon lord was taken aback, realizing he was stuck in a child's body and that the reincarnation had failed. No! God, please, no! No! Resilia rushed over to hug him, making sure he wasn't hurt. All thoughts of punishing her vanished as he started to feel weak from hunger. She handed him some food and water and introduced herself as Resilia Ray Crystalia, a swordswoman in training at the 7th Assault Garden Excalibur Academy. He introduced himself as Leonis Magnus, a 10-year-old kid. Resilia wondered if the voids had kidnapped him, and Leonis asked what she meant by voids. Resilia explained that the voids had started appearing 64 years ago and Leonis listened intently. Regina alerts Resilia to a void she's detected and Resilia quickly covers Leonis as the ground starts shaking and rocks begin to fall. <laughs> Suddenly, an ogre-sized void bursts into the room. Reselia whips out her weapon and starts firing, but it's like trying to kill a zombie with a nerf gun. The void just won't die. Meanwhile, Leonis tries to cast a spell, but trips over his own cloak and face plants like a noob. He groans, thinking his current body is too small to handle his demon lord powers. Just then, Regina appears, blasting the void with her massive gun. One huge blast sends the monster flying into the wall. Leonis is impressed, wondering what kind of weapon she's using. Regina yells at Resilia to grab the kid and run since the void is still alive. As they make a break for it, another void blocks their path. Resilia readies her weapon to attack, but the void targets Leonis just as he's about to cast a spell. Resilia pushes him out of the way, taking the hit herself. The void slices her stomach open and she crumples to the ground, bleeding out. With her last breath, she tells Leonis to find Regina and get to the surface. Leonis is furious, kneeling beside her body and thinking how foolish she was to think he couldn't handle the monster's weak attack. His staff materializes in his hand and he uses it to deflect the attacks of three more voids that appear. He points the staff at the void that hurt Reselia and unleashes a powerful spell, smashing it to the ground after taking care of the other voids, he uses his magic to bring Reselia back to life as a way to thank her for risking herself to save him. Reselia wakes up, eyes widening as she takes in the magic staff, thinking it's a holy sword power. The three of them finally make it to the surface where they hop on a ride back to the city like they're in a bad 90s music video. As they approach the city, Leonis marvels at the buildings and Reselia explains what they are. It's then that he realizes he's a thousand years in the future. After rolling into the city, Leonis was low-key, relieved to find out he'd be crashing at Excalibur Academy thanks to his amnesia-induced memory loss. As Regina takes off, Reselia briefs him on the upcoming entrance exams. She promises to meet him at the exit and Leonis can't help but think his plan to rebuild his demonic army 
has hit a major roadblock. Before the exams, he summons his trusty sidekicks, Blackest the Black Wolf and Sherry the Maid Girl. Leonis tasks them with scouting out the island they're on, suspecting there might be more to explore. His loyal servants agree to get to work. Next, Leonis heads to a room where some fancy devices check his mana levels and whip up a student ID card. After that, he meets up with Roselia at the exit and she gives him a tour of Excalibur Academy. As they stroll past the girls' dorms, they run into Musil Rhodes, who loves to rub it in Roselia's face that she can't wield a holy sword despite it being in her bloodline. He offers to let her join his platoon, but Roselia isn't having it. Musil takes things too far, grabbing Roselia's hair and dragging her towards him. Leonis sees Red using his powers to make Musal let go and drop to his knees in pain and fear. While pretending to help Musal up, Leonis quietly threatens to make him regret ever touching Rosalia again. <laughs> Once Musil is free from the spell, he summons his holy sword, but another girl, Elfin Fillet, shows up just in time to stop him. After Musil and his crew beat it, Elfin introduces herself as a member of Rysalia's platoon. After dropping the bombshell about the crazy energy vibes, Elfin pieces out, leaving Rysalia to play tour guide for Leonis to their dorm. As they stroll in, Leonis can't help but notice their dorm looks like it's been through a few wars. Think ancient artifacts and dusty cobwebs. Rysalia fills him in, explaining that the quality of their dorm is directly tied to their performance. The top scoring platoons get the sweetest digs. <laughs> Once they're in her room, Leonis asks if it's cool for him to crash there and Rizelia gives him the thumbs up as she starts stripping down. She shows him the bathroom and he jumps in the shower. When Rizelia walks in, buck naked, and starts helping him wash his hair, she lets him know that he's welcome to join their platoon once he gets his holy sword. <laughs> but then she suddenly passes out cold. Leonis seems to know what's going on and as he touches her thigh, a symbol appears, snapping her back to reality. With a pair of red eyes and fangs no less, she sinks her teeth into his neck and then suddenly returns to normal, looking like she's seen a ghost. Leonis breaks the news to her. He had lied about healing her with the holy sword because he doesn't have the power to bring people back from the dead. The real Rysalia Re Crystallia, he tells her, is actually dead. Roselia woke up in a bed with a zero recollection of how she got there. Like, she didn't even remember her Netflix password, let alone how she ended up in this weirdo's lair. Enter Leonis, a mysterious dude with a bad case of I'm too cool for human touch syndrome. He casually dropped the bomb that he'd used his sorcery skills to teleport her to his crib. Roselia's curiosity was piqued. Who was this guy? Leonis revealed that he was the reincarnation of an ancient sorcerer and that Roselia was a vampire, stronger than before. She opened up to him about the devastating void attack that had claimed her family members' lives, leaving her alone with Regina. Just then, Leonis's stomach growled and they headed to the cafeteria to grab some food. He tried to pay with an old coin, but it was worthless, leaving him feeling down. <laughs> That's when they stumbled upon Sakuya, a girl being harassed by two thugs demanding payment. Sakuya whipped out her sword and took them down with ease, sending them running. She apologized to Rysalia for not joining them on their mission. After lunch, they headed to Leonis's holy sword inquiry. He showed off his staff, looking puzzled by the robot simulator beside him. Rysalia explained that it was meant to help him train. Leonis crushed the robots in one swift move, drawing more attention than he'd intended. <laughs> Muzzle Rhodes and his platoon challenged him to a fight, but Rysalia refused to let Leonis go solo. She borrowed a sword and joined the battle. Muzzle proposed a deal. If Rysalia lost, she'd join his platoon. Leonis agreed, saying that if Muzzle lost, he'd leave Rysalia alone. It was on, like a Fortnite battle royale. The battle royale went down and Musil was left shook as Rosalia took out his squad like they were a bunch of noobs in a Fortnite match. Leonis was low-key impressed, 
realizing that Resalia's vampiric powers were just the cherry on top of her sword fighting skills, the real MVP was her determination to not get slain. Just as Resalia was about to take down Musul, he whipped out his holy sword, rendering her immobile. Her sword fell to the ground, and Musul walked away, ready to take on Leonis. But Resalia refused to give up, chanting, Protect Leonis. until a light appeared in her empty hands, shocking Leonis. Musal turned to face her, and his jaw dropped as her holy sword dematerialized. She broke through his force attack and lunged at him, sending him tumbling to the ground in fear. With one swift move, she cut down his holy sword, and his platoon members' swords vanished too. The 18th platoon erupted in cheers as Resalia celebrated getting her holy sword. As a bonus, they agreed to let Leonis crash in her room. <laughs> While Rosalia is showering, Leonis takes a closer look at the map on the tablet Elfin handed over. He gives Blackus a quick call to fill him in on the latest discoveries. Blackus spills the beans about a power plant that's basically the city's mana lifeline. Just as they are wrapping up the call, Shari chimes in, letting Leonis know that nobody seems to have a clue who he is, which is pretty weird if you ask him. Meanwhile, a group of students get sent to investigate the mysterious shipwreck underwater. But things took a dark turn when they were ambushed by a monster that's eerily calling out Leonis's name, like it was trying to slide into his DMs. Leonis was mid-couch nap, rehashing his glory days as Leonis the hero. You know, back when he was stabbed in the back, literally by those in power. <laughs> But then, Rosalie came along and asked him to join her team. Now, as he woke up from his couch nap, he remembered his mission to track down an army for her. Leonis used the symbol to rouse Rosalia from her slumber, then asked if she'd snacked on him the night before. She confirmed, just as Elfin called to inform her about an important meeting. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the meeting, they were discussing the mysterious disappearance of troops who'd gone underwater to investigate. The consensus was that a Void Lord must be responsible. Later, Leonis was putting Rosalia through her paces, promising to teach her some sweet sorcery skills. Since she was his minion, he whipped out his staff and summoned some undead minions for her to practice on. <laughs> After their training session, they decided to grab some grub. Elfin was still trying to get to the bottom of the underwater mystery while Regina walked in with a fresh batch of goodies. Sakuya followed, chatting about a dog she'd just met. Rysalia had picked up some donuts and took them to a restaurant where a bunch of kids rushed out to greet her. She explained that it was their home turf too. Meanwhile, the underwater investigation team came up empty-handed. Sakuya, however, was getting some weird vibes and Elfin noticed some funky vibrations in the rim. Two guards exploring the ship's lower decks stumbled upon a room filled with roots, leaving them wondering what in the world was going on. It was like they stumbled into a secret garden or a horror movie. Alfine dials in to the meeting via video call, dropping a bombshell about the Void's movements. At first, everyone's skeptical, but when they detect the Void's underground activity, panic sets in. The Void starts wreaking havoc, attacking security teams and making a beeline for the power plant. Alfine explains the catastrophic consequences if it reaches the plant first, prompting the commander to order the soldiers to defend it at all costs. The monster starts infiltrating the power plant, using its roots like some kind of creepy underground Uber Eats delivery. The soldiers open fire, but unfortunately it's like trying to kill a zombie, it just won't die. The Void breaches the plant, triggering a city wide alarm that sends everyone running for cover like it's a Black Friday sale. Meanwhile, the students at Excalibur Academy are assigned combat positions as a swarm of voids approaches. Roselia and Leonis rush outside to get a handle on the situation. Roselia quickly realizes they need to act fast and dashes back inside to escort the kids to safety, but it's too late.
The voids are already closing in. They lock the kids in the restaurant and head back out to fight. Leonis starts casting spells to torch the voids while Rosalia shows off her sword skills, taking them down left and right. Their friends join the battle from the rooftop, taking on the voids like they're in a real life video game. Just when they think they're making progress, dragon voids appear, spewing fire at the city and the weapons firing at them. A hydra void joins the fray, prompting Leonis to ask Rosalia to cover him while he casts a powerful spell. The spell unleashes a firestorm on the voids, followed by another that crushes the mega void. But just as they think they are gaining the upper hand, the ground cracks open and roots burst out, binding Rosalia and dragging her into the depths. Leonis rushes to her aid only to come face to face with Arkrell, the monster that's been chanting his name. Leonis charges at Arkrell with his staff, but Dude just poofs into thin air like a ghost at a rave. Just then, Blackus emerges from the shadows looking like the coolest cat in town and warns Leonis that there are miners watching him, so he better keep it PG. Blackus whips up a protective barrier around their house and summons some undead guards to keep them safe while Leonis figures out his next move. As he's thinking, he he spots a calm on the ground and hears Alphine's voice trying to reach Rosalia. He grabs the calm and fills Alphine in on the situation. Rosalia has been kidnapped and she should use the holy sword to track her down. Alphine does as told and soon reports back. With the monster's location, Leonis and Blackers head to the power plant, leaving the rest of Platoon 18 to deal with a pesky Hydra, with Shari watching their backs from a distance. When they arrive, they are greeted by Arkrail's creepy roots wrapped around the power plant. Arkrail all like, I thought I died ages ago. And Leonis is all, nah, you just got your soul sealed away. Leonis uses the calm to chat with Rosalia, who's stuck deep in Arkrael's roots. <laughs> Arkrael starts attacking, but Leonis dodges and casts a spell, summoning sharp objects that slice through the roots. Blackus jumps in, breathing fire, but they soon realize Arkrael siphoning their mana. Arkrael unleashes a spell that sends Leonis crashing to the ground, leaving him bleeding and battered. As Blackus gives him the lowdown, Leonis learns that Arkrael is siphoning energy from the power plant. After tracking down Rosalia, Leonis chucks the calm at her, but things take a dark turn when she's stabbed in the process. As she struggles to break free and protect Leonis, her vampire powers kick in. With her newfound abilities, she uses her blood to slice through the roots binding her and grows wings to escape. <laughs> Wielding her holy sword like a lightsaber-wielding Jedi, she launches a fierce attack on Arkrael, making it cry out in agony. Rosalia then reunites with Leonis, who instructs her to keep him covered while he takes on Arkrael. With the demon sword Rosalie gave him, Leonis prepares to claim the land. After chanting his spells, he strikes the final blow, defeating Arkrael. With the Void boss defeated, the voids begin to dissipate and Platoon 18 is finally reunited. Regina gives Leonis a hand getting into the library where he digs into some research on the mysterious language scribbled on the spoils. Meanwhile, Sharnark, a sneaky witch, has a plan brewing. She's granted the beast the power to shield the holy sword, which is meant for humans only, with the ultimate goal of attacking the city and kidnapping its citizens. After his research sesh, Leonis takes a stroll to the harbor where he's low-key impressed by the battleship that's docked and ready to roll. He mingles with the crowd gathered around the princess who's living her best life on the ship. Later, he meets up with the rest of the 18 platoon crew minus Regina who's got her own thing going on. Rosalia, one of the platoon members, asks Leonis if he's been eating his veggies. To lift her mood, he whips out a keychain and tells her he got it for her as a thank you for saving his life. The gesture works and Rosalia perks up. She then meets Fenris and the two of them receive an invite to the party on the battleship. As they board the ship, chaos erupts. Many humans disguised as guards launch a surprise attack, taking out the real guards and blending in seamlessly with the crowd. On the ship, Shari fills Leonis in on what he's learned about their vessel. But before they can get too deep into discussion, Rizalia and the orphan kids gang up on Shari. <laughs> forcing him to confront his fear of swimming. Despite his initial reluctance, they convince him to take the plunge and even offer to teach him some strokes. 
As the sun dips below the horizon, the group heads to the lounge to unwind. But the evening takes a dark turn when the guards escorting the princess to her quarters are suddenly ambushed and killed. The demi-humans reveal their true sinister forms and the princess is forced to release her fox to send out a distress signal. The demi-humans, however, are one step ahead, revealing that they've taken the others hostage as well. Back in the lounge, Leonis and the others find themselves surrounded by the demi-humans humans who break the news about the princess's abduction. Without hesitation, Leonis declares he's going to rescue her and then he vanishes into thin air, leaving behind a pile of ropes. Rysalia quickly covers for him, playing it cool. Meanwhile, the princess's fox reaches Regina outside the warship, which has begun to move. Regina gets the message that her sister is in danger and leaps into action, jumping back on board. As Leonis searches the hallways for the princess, he runs into the spirit fox, who's on the same mission. Regina almost crashes into Leonis all out of breath, warning him that her sis is in grave danger. Regina reveals she's the princess's sister and has come to catch a glimpse of her. After chatting about their family connection, they resume their search for the princess. They head to the ship's control room, only to find the guards dead. Leonis suggests Regina use her spirit to communicate with the princess and figure out where she is. Regina gives it a shot, and the princess fills them in on the ship's destination and advises Regina to use her spirit to take control of the ship and turn it around. Meanwhile, Rysalia and the squad are plotting their great escape from their unwanted visitors. Leonis and Regina decide to split up with Regina. Regina trying to regain control of the ship and Leonis going all Liam Neeson on the princess's kidnapper on the deck. Rysalia and the others notice they are headed straight for the Void's Reef. As the Voids start breaking into the battleship, they take them down one by one. Leonis then uses the keychain to communicate with Rysalia, updating her on Regina's progress. Regina finds herself surrounded by Voids in the ship's hallway, but Rysalia shows up just in time using her vampire powers to take them down. The ship changes course and the princess Princess breathes a sigh of relief as she's still on the plane with her kidnapper. Leonis stops the plane from taking off and wipes out the surrounding voids. He warns the kidnapper that she's not getting away with terrorizing his kingdom. Back in the banquet room, the voids close in and the kids start crying. Just in time, Shari appears out of nowhere, taking out the voids with her stealthy attacks. Leonis faced off against Sharnark, introducing himself as the Demon Lord, but she just laughed, thinking he was playing make-believe and attacked him with a spell. Her eyes widened in shock when he effortlessly blocked it, explaining that it was his own creation. He grabbed her, curious about her motives. She revealed her plan to create holy swordsmen from scratch and gift them to her goddess. Before she could reveal the goddess's identity, a monster suddenly appeared and killed her. <laughs> Leonis recognized the monster and went on the attack, but it teleported and reappeared above him. He dodged the attack and started fighting off the voids trying to reach the princess. Soon he was surrounded by the monster and its minions. Meanwhile, Regina was still in the control room, taking matters into her own hands. She started blasting the monsters with guns and taking out the voids. Then she launched a barrage of missiles at the main monster. Rezalia showed up, handling the voids while Leonis whipped out his demon sword, cast a spell and struck the final blow. The princess thanked the students of Excalibur for saving the day. She asked about the boy and Rezilia replied that he was feeling under the weather and had headed back to the dorms. Leonis, meanwhile, was nursing some serious muscle aches. Just then, Regina walked in, holding a tray with a warm apple pie and a smile. <laughs> Just as the city guards were about to bust the demi-humans in the forest, a mysterious voice dropped a sick spell, turning the guards into stone statues and forcing the demi-humans to kneel. The voice introduces herself as Zolvadis, the demon lord and the OG ruler of the world. Meanwhile, Leonis's phone started blowing up and Rysalia was on the other end, asking where he was hiding. After the demi-humans agree to Zolvadis's demands, she vanishes and Leonis finds himself back in his room. Rysalia, on the other hand, runs into Shari, who's busy sweeping the floor while searching for Leonis. <laughs> 
Later, the platoon members gather in the lounge to discuss the weird stuff going on around their dorm. Think birds flying around, a black dog lurking, and a ghostly maid making appearances. They also prep for their upcoming battle against Platoon 11 led by the infamous Fenris. The fight goes down in the forest with Regina and Alphine teaming up to protect a flag while Leonis and Reselia take out one of their rival's flag. Sakuya's got her hands full dealing with Fenris's ice wolves. Meanwhile, Fenris and her partner face off against Leonis and Resilia. Fenris chooses to take on Resilia, leaving her partner to handle Leonis. Things take a turn when Fenris overpowers Resilia, pinning her to a tree with her ice magic. But Resilia is not one to give up. She starts breaking free from the ice, leaving Fenris stunned. With a fierce determination, Resilia charges at Fenris with her holy sword. Fenris tries to block with her ice coat hands but Reselia's sword is too powerful, shattering them and securing the win for the 18th platoon. <laughs> In the mysterious lost city, a stoked kid can't contain his excitement, eagerly awaiting the return of his queen. Meanwhile, the 18th platoon receives a distress call from two survivors and is tasked with searching the suddenly reappeared city. They hop on a plane, ready to roll out. As they soar through the skies, Leonis catches some Z's on Regina's lap, enjoying the ear scratches and feeling a weird sensation wash over him. He's transported back to his promise to Rosalie, vowing to find her after a thousand years. When he woke up, he was low-key, surprised to find himself on Reselia's lap, with Regina announcing their arrival. After landing, Reselia and Leonis split off from the others to explore. Leonis gives Shari a mission, protect the three girls girls at all costs. As they stroll through the city, Reselia's memories come flooding back. She used to call this place home. She paints a vivid picture of how it used to be, but her nostalgia is short-lived. She detects a strange void which suddenly opens fire on them. They dodge for cover, but Reselia takes a tumble and a pole comes crashing down on her. Just as they think it's all over, a massive void materializes out of thin air, looming ominously above them. The void makes another move on Reselia, but Leonis is quick to react, using his magic to send her underground to safety. However, the void doesn't give up and starts attacking him instead. Leonis blocks its attack with his shield and retaliates, sending the void crashing to the ground. After taking down the void, he rushes to Reselia's side, finding her injured and lying on the ground. That's when he meets the spirits of the soldiers who fought alongside her dad, who fill him in on the Void Lord's plan to wreak havoc in the city. They even offer to help Reselia escape. Meanwhile, the others catch wind of the battle and start chasing after them. That's when they stumble upon an elf girl who's a total sword prodigy. Sakuya steps up to take her on, warning her friends to hang back because they are no match for her skills. The two engage in an intense fight, but Sakuya suddenly stops, realizing the elf girl is already hurt. <laughs> 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 Back in the car, Reselia is getting some much-needed blood from Leonis. Alfin checks in, asking if they're okay, and Reselia reassures her, filling her in on the Void Lord's plan. Sakuya and Regina tend to Arlie's wounds, only to discover she's not from the Seventh Assault Garden. Finally, Leonis and Reselia arrive at her old house, where she takes a stroll with the spirits as her guides. Leonis, on the other hand, kicks back in a ridiculously comfortable chair, polishing a bone and reminiscing about the good old days. Meanwhile, Leonis stumbled upon her dad's old study room, which was basically a shrine to his awesomeness. She picked up a book, and suddenly, she was hit with a wave of feels, tears streaming down her face like she was watching a Marley and Me marathon. The spirits in the room seem to sense her distress, and before she knows it, she's transported back in time to a fond memory, sitting on her dad's lap, listening to a bedtime story about the legendary hero and the demon lord. But just as she's getting lost in the nostalgia, a voice breaks the spell. She looks up to see a boy standing in front of her, and for a split second she thinks he might be a survivor. Little does she know it's the Void Lord himself, and he's not exactly thrilled about being mistaken for a human. <laughs>
Feeling humiliated, he unleashes a spell that sends her crashing to the ground, surrounded by flames. Leonis heard her screams and took off after her, determined to save her from the clutches of the Void Lord who was basically being a giant buzzkill. Rizalia woke up to find three undead homies shielding her from the Void Lord who was still trying to get his attack on. But just as he was about to strike, Leonis burst onto the scene like a furious K-pop idol ready to throw down. The Void Lord stumbled back, caught off guard, and Leonis quickly checked in on Rizalia to make sure she wasn't like totally dead or anything. The Void Lord regained his composure and launched a fireball at them, but Leonis was ready. He countered with an ice spell extinguishing the flames. Just as they thought they'd gotten the upper hand, the ground started shaking like crazy. The Void Lord casually mentioned that his job was done. He'd helped the goddess get into her vessel, and with that, he vanished into thin air. Leonis's eyes narrowed as he realized he'd seen the Void Lord before, about a thousand years ago, and that meant the demon lord he was talking about was probably Rosalie. Suddenly, the goddess emerged from the ground in her massive vessel, surrounded by swarms of void minions. <laughs> Leonis, Rysalia, and the undead charged outside to take on the voids, but they kept regenerating like they were in a horror movie. Leonis quickly figured out that the key to taking them down was to target their heads. He filled Rysalia and the undead in on the plan, and they got to work annihilating the voids. Meanwhile, Sakuya and the gang were facing the same problem. Alfie included them in on the void's weakness, and they started taking them out one by one. As the goddess approaches, Leonis springs into action, swinging his staff at her, but his attack bounces right off like he's hitting a brick wall. Undeterred, he tries again, this time unleashing a barrage of fireballs that rain down on the voids, taking out a few of them. Meanwhile, he throws up a protective shield to deflect any incoming attacks. Alfine, meanwhile, uses her drones to scout out some nearby vehicles and they make a beeline for them. Once they're safely inside, Leonis tells Alfine to cover him while he takes to the skies determined to take down the goddess. He starts casting spells left and right and even breaks out his trusty demon sword, but no matter what he does, he can't seem to land a hit. That's when he hears Rosalia's voice in his head, freezing him in place. <laughs> He tries to shake off the feeling, telling himself it's just his imagination playing tricks on him. But when he tries to attack again, nothing happens. The goddess seizes the opportunity, sending a flurry of spears flying his way. One of them finds its mark, plunging deep into Leonis' stomach, and he crashes to the ground. Rysalia, furious at seeing her friend hurt, finds herself wearing the dress Leonis had given her earlier. She charges at the goddess, sword flashing in the light, and manages to take her down. As the goddess lies groaning on the ground, Rysalia rushes to Leonis' side, the undead creatures forming a protective circle around them. Leonis, lying in her lap, tells her to take his blood and use it to escape. But as he looks up at her, he's hit with a sudden memory, the promise he made to Rosalia to use the demon sword to kill her if she ever showed up as a different creature and to find the real her. He's convinced it wasn't just a dream, but a real memory that Rosalia had sealed away. Rysalia patches up Leonis and gets back to business, determined to find the real Rosalie with the demon sword in hand. The spirits offer to lend a hand and he recruits them into his undead army, tasking Rysalia with leading the charge while he takes care of the goddess. Meanwhile, the goddess is getting back on her feet, summoning even more voids to join the fray. Arl's all about joining the battle against her true enemies and Sakuya agrees to take her along for the ride. As the girls hop on their vehicles and speed off to join the fight, Rysalia and the undead army clash with the voids, protecting Leonis as he works on a spell that'll wipe the goddess off the map. Just as things are heating up, the goddess unleashes her own spell, sending fireballs raining down on them. Leonis yells out for Rysalia and the undead to scatter, and they pop into protective bubbles, floating in midair as the flames engulf them. With the clock still ticking, Leonis keeps casting his spell, knowing it needs more time to take effect. As the girls are still a ways off from the battle, a massive void suddenly appears above them. Scared they won't be able to take it down, Shari, who's been secretly watching over them, takes care of it without being seen. <laughs> Meanwhile, Leonis's Black Moon has reached its peak. 
The goddess grabs a huge chunk of a building and hurls it at the girls, but Resalia uses her sword to break it apart. Just as Leonis is about to attack, the goddess whips out a powerful shield, but he's not having it. When the girls approach, they launch a joint attack from behind, with Arl's strike breaking the shield and injuring the goddess. Leonis seizes the opportunity to land the final blow, obliterating the goddess. <laughs> The ship came to a halt, and the undead dropped to their knees like they were in a mosh pit. They bid Rysalia farewell, saying they're off to the afterlife to reunite with her family. They expressed their gratitude for the honor of fighting alongside their master before disappearing into thin air. Just then, Rysalia hears someone calling her name. Leonis quickly hides the undead, and planes from the seventh assault arrive to take them back to the city. Rysalia's injuries are severe, so they strap her down to a bed as soon as they arrive. Blackus and Shari warn Leonis to keep a close eye on the elf hero, as they were catching some Zs, an explosion rocked the city like a Kanye West tweet. Meanwhile, Sakya's out in the forest, training to become a sword master like Arl when the blast goes off. Alfin looks on as Arl makes her escape from her cell.